Peace and blessings. Welcome back to the channel once again, where we talk all things health and healing from a holistic perspective. And today will be no different. Today, I'm pulling our content from the comments. Somebody asked me, I uh, did a video on uh, the kidneys. And one of the questions they asked me was, can you address what does it mean when you have foamy urine? Meaning like when you urinate and you look in the toilet, there's bubbles everywhere, okay? And so I thought that was a really good question and it was something I haven't addressed. And so I thought it would be a good topic for us to talk about today. Because again, I'm always telling you guys that there's always outward symptoms that are like check-ins and lights telling us that something is wrong. OK, and sometimes when you go into the doctor, the tests that they use, they don't tell you that there's something wrong until it's too late. OK, and so this is why I'm always pushing people to understand that you have to be your first doctor. OK, you have I mean, even when you go into your doctor, your doctor has to ask you a ton of questions before they can get a, a clear understanding of what's going on with you. OK, so the first round of knowledge is coming directly from you, which means that you need to be a more astute at you. This is why the, the age old golden rule of know thyself is so important. OK, so we're going to talk about the kidneys today and why. Or what are the po possible causes of foamy urine? But before we get started with that, first, let's talk about the functions of the kidneys, because I don't think people will truly understand A, how important the kidneys are and B, what they actually do, okay? People just think the kidneys make urine, okay? But they don't know what that means. And so let's get into that for just a second. First and foremost, the, the kidney is one of the elimination organs, okay? We have several elimination organs in the body and the kidney is by far one of the most important. Because one of the things that the kidney does is filter the blood, okay? And filtering the blood is very important. The blood goes everywhere in the body. It is the river of life, okay? It's, it's taking the nutrients that you need to every corner and crevice of the body. Every cell of the body gets its nourishment because the blood is being delivered as it flows throughout the body. This is why circulation is so important. Okay, also our immune system. Okay, if we get an infection in our toe versus on the top of our scalp, guess what? The immune system primarily gets there by delivery through the blood system, okay? Now, if your blood system is tainted with things that don't need, need to be there, okay? And think about this, the, the kidneys are constant, constantly filtering. I mean, my, your kidneys, my kidneys are filtering right now, okay? Because one of the things that it also does is sort of filters the blood to control fluid balance in the body as well, too. OK, to make sure you don't get a ton of fluid in your lower limbs versus no fluid up to your brain. OK, so it's really important for that as well, too. Also, what we know is, you know, you urinate. But when you're urinating, you're getting rid of uric acid. And that's hugely important too, because our blood pH is slightly alkaline. Okay, so we're alkaline, all right? And the more uric acid you retain in your body, guess what, it's gonna make the body more and more acidic. Okay, and when we go into a state of metabolic acidosis, we are in trouble, okay? It, is, it could be fatal, all right? So the kidneys have that job as well too, to filter out the uric acid from the body as well too. So the kidney is filtering out uric acid, waste products, excess fluid, okay? This is why sometimes you drink a lot of water and then all of a sudden you gotta pee so much it's because the body is saying, well, we got enough water, okay? Or sometimes it could be that the quality of water is causing you to pee as well too, low quality of water because the body, is, the water isn't being retained in the body, okay? Also, the kidneys activate vitamin D, okay? So yeah, our primary way that we're supposed to get vitamin D is through the sun, okay? But guess what? When that vitamin D hits the body, it has to become activated. And one of the places that it has to go, in addition to the liver, is the kidneys to become activated. So there could be a lot of people who actually have a vitamin D deficiency, uh, but the real issue is that the kidneys aren't functioning properly 
as a result, not enough vitamin D is becoming activated because the kidneys aren't functioning properly. The kidneys have too much waste in them, okay? And so that's a really, really important uh, function as well. And then also, the kidneys are responsible for controlling the production of red blood cells. Now, you got to know that's important. We cannot live without blood, okay? And we need red blood cells, okay? And so one of the primary jobs of the kidneys is to produce those red blood cells. So when the kidneys become damaged, guess what? You're not producing red blood cells. You're also gonna be vitamin D deficient because it's not gonna become activated. You're also gonna have fluid balance issues. So you may ha be have a lot of edema in places. It may also cause you to have high blood pressure as well too. So that's why high blood pressure and the kidneys are so heavily associated. And you're also going to produce a lot of acid in the body because the, acid, the uric acid isn't gonna be filtered out, which leads me to what happens when you have a lot of uric acid in the body? Okay, when you have high levels of uric acid in the body, you're gonna have high blood pressure. Uh, it can actually make your psoriasis worse. Okay, and, and when you talk to anybody who has psoriasis, it literally, their skin sometimes literally oozes. Okay, all right, and what is the skin? The skin is another elimination organ. And what happens when one elimination organ isn't functioning well enough? Guess what? The body has to figure out another way to get rid of that particular waste. And guess what? Sometimes what could be coming out of the kidneys comes out through the skin. Okay? And if you ask anybody who's had psoriasis, their skin sometimes feel like acid is coming out of the skin. Just ask them. And they'll tell you. It fit, Literally, their skin is so irritated and it feels like a burning sensation a lot of the time, okay? So high uric acid levels also contribute to obesity as well too. So increase in fat levels. Also um, gout, people who have trouble with gout, metabolic issues, joint pain and mus muscle soreness or joint, joint soreness. Also you'll notice people who have higher uric acid levels, which means that your kidneys aren't functioning the way they should. You'll also notice that their skin will be a shiny red or purple, okay? Shiny red or purple as well too, all right? So let's get into what does it mean when your urine is foamy after all of that, right? What does it mean when your urine is foam, foamy? What it, it could be that your bladder is really full, okay? When your bladder is really full because you've been holding it quite possibly or whatever reason, Maybe you drink a little bit too much and your bladder gets really full. There's going to be a lot of pressure behind it. And that pressure when you urinate can create those bubbles that make your urine appear foamy. So with that one, it's not a problem, right? So if you feel like you have a very full bladder and you urinate it and you see the bubbles or it looks foamy, it could simply be because of that, okay? Also, when the urine becomes concentrated. So reason number two, uh, the urine becomes very concentrated, okay? Whenever the urine becomes very concentrated, there's gonna be a lot of uric acid in there, okay? And typically that happens when you're dehydrated or pregnant, okay? So dehydration could be a sign or pregnancy could cause your urine to be a little bit foamy as well too because it's so concentrated, all right? Number three, medication. Certain medications can cause your urine to be foamy as well too. Let's say if you got a urinary tract infection and of course with urinary tract infections, they, they can become very painful and certain, certain medications that you could use like azo, azo or peridium, okay? These medications, when you use them, they can cause your uh, urine to become foamy as well too, all right? Number four, number four reason could be but just simply because of the type of cleaning supplies or cleaning products that you use as well, too. So what I tell people to do is, you know, after you go through a few flushes, come back once the cleaning supplies are pretty clear out of the toilet. And, um, and I highly recommend that you switch to natural, um, you know, um, products as well, too. But if you come back and the cleaning supplies are definitely out of the toilet and then you uh, urinate and you see the foaminess 
Again, it could be because of the past three that, uh, reasons that I talked to you about, or it could be because of the next two that I'm going to talk about, okay? But you can kind of just flush it out a couple of times, come back, pee again, see if the foaminess comes back. Another reason specifically for men is a condition known as retrograde ejaculation. And what happens with that is when a man ejaculates, uh, the semen could back up into the bladder. And when you urinate, it could cause the foaminess as well, too. Uh, so that's uh, that's a reason. And um, uh, is that a cause for concern? Potentially. Uh, but this next one, this next and last um, potential reason why you have foamy urine, this is the one that is the big concern, okay? Especially if none of the other scenarios apply to you and you also notice that you have a little lower back pain all the time, which could be your kidneys. Um, the last and final cause, uh, which is a big cause, uh, a big concern, uh, is protein in the urine or proteinuria, okay? Protein in the urine. When you got protein in the urine, it is a big issue. And let me explain why. The kidneys normally filter out excess water and waste. Waste being uric acid, uh, sometimes medications, etc. All right, because you notice that sometimes when you urinate, certain medications can turn your urine orange. Okay, so the normal function of the kidney is to filter out the blood, and then it filters out excess fluid. It filters out waste. Okay, toxins, etc. Now, when you are starting to get protein in the urine in the form of albumin, and you're also you're quite often uh, also you're losing key nutrients as well too. Okay, if you lose, and this is why it's a big concern because proteins and nutrients are too big to go through the filter, the kidney filter. The kidney filter is very small. Okay, you got all these nephrons, two hundred and 50 million nephrons, right? And they're filtering. They're filtering the blood, all right? And as they become damaged, these filtering units, which are very small, now these big particles like proteins that would never filter out of the kidneys are now filtering out. So the protein in the urine is telling you that the kidneys are damaged because now the filtering unit, uh, the, the small little pores of the unit are now so big that they're filtering out protein. So this is a big signal that you have uh, issues with your kidneys, okay? Because typically these type of nutrients will stay in the bloodstream because guess what? You need them. We need our protein. We need our nutrients. But when they start to filter out into the urine and you do a urine test, a urine analysis, and you start to see protein in the urine, it is a big, big issue. It is a sign of late to end stage kidney disease. Okay. And again, a lot of people don't find out until they're in the third or the fourth or the end stage of kidney disease. So it's huge, hugely important that you evaluate yourself on a constant basis. Okay. And as I've given you these, you know, um, six sort of potential causes of foamy urine, um, again, we could talk about the color of your urine. We could talk about the smell of the urine. But again, this definitely could be one of the telltale signs uh, that you could be potentially, um, you know, having kidney damage as well, too. So um, I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's been useful. And I hope that this type of information you share with other people, because again, there's always telltale signs that lead up to the eventual diagnosis, okay? And we wanna get ahead of that so that we find this out in stage one, which isn't a, pro a problem, stage one kidney disease, and which is very easy to reverse, okay? Very easy to reverse by shifting your lifestyle and diet, okay? So again, I hope you have enjoyed the information. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. You hitting the subscribe button is what keeps this channel going. So I want to thank everybody there who is a true supporter by subscribing and comment below if this information was useful for you. It kind of gave you some, 
some aha moments as well too. And make sure you share this content so we can get that information out to the world. All right, until the next time, peace and blessings and Godspeed.